<laughs> what are we saying? Yeah. Hey guys! Good afternoon. Or morning. Whatever, Whatever time morning. of the day Whatever it is for you. Post this and you um, see it. Just real yeah. quick, our hosts are. I'm Mark. I'm Nelly. I'm Matt. And welcome to the Graphic Ramblers. Very what? special episode. Yes, our. She makes comics. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to let Nelly talk. Because she so does she, make comics. She makes comics. <laughs> um, she Makes Comics is a very important documentary that I believe everybody should watch. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about women in comics. All in the 1900s. From the, I guess from, from the span of all yeah. of comics yeah. history. Like from the 1900s to today. And... It involves like notable figures, important pe- uh, what is it? Moments important. in history. Yeah. It um, mentions it, the influence. Yeah, everything yeah. from cosplaying to being in comics to artists, being fans. Artists, writers, mm-hmm. editors. Um, it, it's just and just the difficulty that women had to yeah. deal with. Um, when the ignored history of women yeah, comics exactly. that people don't like to admit has happened. Yeah, especially with and, recent events like yeah. the Angoulême. Grand yes. Prix, who ignored uh, a lot of female creators and said, well, They ignored all of them, not a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. All majority of them. of them, yeah. No, no yeah. all of them. I think, no, they had two, they had two, yeah. I think, right? No, they they had didn't two. nominate any of this. Oh, year. I just meant, like, in the history oh, of, like, the history the, of it, yeah. That's why, so that's why I said, like, <laughs> as a joke. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, well, women in comics, the, their influence has spanned since the beginning. Yeah, the comics. I mean, Women used to like. I learned a lot from this documentary. Yeah. Oh, actually. it was super yeah. informative. Yeah, like even things us nerds that know things about comics yeah. didn't yeah. know. Um, I'm surprised of the things that were mentioned that, like you said, that people who are as involved in comics like us might not know. Um, it's like with anything. Uh, if you don't, if you don't go looking for it, or if it's not like just readily available you'll never know these kind yeah, of things exactly. which is yeah. why this documentary is so great yeah it's really important um it was way better than the image image revolution it, I thought. Yeah. Oh, on yeah. so many levels yeah. And, yeah they even let men in their video in yeah. the image documentary yeah. did not let women they did, in there definitely yeah. and, and the neat thing is that you do see men that are supportive of yeah, women. Yeah, you do see allies. Yeah, yes. yeah, which is amazing. Well, and, it, and it's nice because the the biggest person they probably spoke with the most was Chris Claremont, and his whole thing was really stepping back and letting women talk. If you don't know Chris, Chris Claremont, you should. He made X Men. Yeah, if Pretty you much. like if you like X Men, chances are Chris Claremont wrote something that you love of yeah. X Men, uh, or he influenced something that you love of X Men. Yes, and he did it with a number of female creators. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I think that the I didn't know Aquaman's artist was a woman. I yeah, yeah. I'm just been an Aquaman like, artist. The beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm just surprised, not just like women, but like women of different races. Yeah, uh, women of different it, like creeds. Really wonderfully yeah. representative. Yeah, um, yeah. It's overall, it's a good documentary. I think like we should really get into it. The history of women in comics. So that's part one. Of this documentary of a documentary. Yes. 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 Um, this all starts off back in the 50s, I believe. Thir- 30s. 30s. Once they start collecting uh, comic strips from newspapers mm-hmm. into the first comic book formats. Yes. Is when the comic book is officially considered to have yeah. started. But one of the things that nobody really talks about, this documentary brings up, is <coughs> most of the popular comic strip artists were women. Yeah. Yep, because all of the men were overseas fighting a war. Yeah, it started off like the what early nineteen hundreds. Yeah, mm-hmm. like basically turn of the century. They were yeah. illustrators uh-huh. in the newspaper, and they show those illustrations, and yeah. they're like fucking perfect and gorgeous. And like, why aren't we talking more it about was, them? Yeah, they were beautiful. And yeah, we'll, oh, probably, yeah. we'll probably put a picture up. Um, there might be yeah. a lot of like what artists like um, like J H Williams do. Yeah, or um, if, if you're into Japanese artists like yeah. Yoshi Taka Amano. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, it, it's definitely clear where a lot of artists are drawing influence from. Yeah, I, if, I, I know this is beside the, top, the point, but if you look, if you read Scott McCloud's making or understanding comics, you can see some of those early comic yeah. strips. And due to there being a large amount of women writing around this time and doing the art, there was um, most of the leads were women. Yeah, you yeah. had jungle girls, you had detective girls, you had superhero yeah, girls. 
uh, romance, romance comics that huge. weren't terrifying and their Rom- messages Rom- were yeah. pretty being put I think out. They were they were also romance, but they were genre mm-hmm. romance. Like yeah. it was like a love story, but it was a western love story yeah. or a, or a pirate love story or a or horror something. love yeah. story. Yeah, it, it like the, the genres were diverse. Um, Definitely like the precursors to like what EC Comics would be doing later. Yeah. And fun fact for you guys, um, even though it was around a time where race was still a thing, like. What? Still <laughs> well, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, Way worse than There that. were black female yeah. creators. Yes. Or color, women of color. The number one comic strip artist was... Who? Jackie Orms. Jackie Orms. Mm-hmm. Um, she was the first African-American woman to work in comic books. Yes. Yeah. Number one syndicated strip. Yeah. Um, I think that brings us to our first thing that we should talk about in this documentary that's great is how we're the women they are. Yeah. It's not just a documentary about, like, aren't white women wonderful? Yeah. It's <laughs> Which it could have been. Everybody. Like, yeah. What, what was also interesting about the readership around this time, around the post-World War II, um, was that the large majority of the readers were females. It was 55% yeah. percent women to 45% men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or boys, like, because they were children, Boy, mostly. Y- yeah. Young boys and, like, yeah. young girls. So that's interesting, considering how much maybe modern comics alienated yes. uh, the readership in terms of... Actively alienated. Yeah. Still. Yeah, it's still a thing, but there there is a movement. To, I mean, this documentary is just evidence of, of the movement yeah. to change those. That this goes to uh, back in the fifties and sixties, romance novels were at, at its peak. Novel, like, the like, the romance like or, like genre, oh, comic oh, okay. genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is when they did the whole uh, the, the comic creator code. code. Yeah, yeah. So that that really put a dent in that. We should probably cover that eventually. Yeah, that's yeah. a video in and of itself, yeah. but it really holds back what you what they could depict. Yeah. Um, and it turns out what they considered offensive a lot of the time was women having thoughts. Yeah. So, or being people. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, oddly enough. They mentioned, like, a few of the things in the comics code, but it was like... I don't really know what it is, though. Like, I've yeah, never it's, known That was the it, problem with it. Yeah. It was never clear. It was just this vague thing. Like, yeah. Uh, Whatever offended whoever was yeah. reading your comic that day it, was it, in the code. It turned off a lot of female readers because yeah. it was basically telling women like you have to get married to be happy yeah. and it's like you don't have to it, it stuck to a lot of traditional gender roles i would say yeah well because yeah. they weren't allowed to show anything else yeah like, and it also became this way for men to reinforce this idea of like well we're back now so stop it yeah you don't need Which to be rosie stupid. the riveter anymore yeah. you can go back to the kitchen or whatever yeah and all that it's definitely a huge message of those books unfortunately and due to all of this bs that means the depiction of women was starting to change a little bit because you had more men writing and drawing this stuff. So yeah, you need more fantasy. Exactly. Stuff. More yeah. super Escape is hero. for the men. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Power so, fantasies, romantic fantasies, yeah. not actual like characters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Marie Servin. Severin. Severin. Um, there, there is people that were still working in the comic book industry at that time. Yes. So don't think there was n- yeah, not no women. women. Yeah. There yeah. was. There she, was. Um, she wound up the definitive artist for Aquaman. Like, yeah. that's no, Ramona, no, that's she's, she's, Frater. Oh, she, I'm sorry. Yeah. She actually was practically the unofficial art director at that time. Yes, sorry. But, because she was that badass. Yeah. But obviously they weren't going to give her that title because... She's a lady. Yeah. Yeah. Hardcore lady types throughout this whole this whole documentary. Yeah, it's that thing of like everybody fucking fought to be there. It's really like and inspirational. Not afraid to say it. Like, yeah. yeah. Because the industry shut them out, I yeah. think that's why they had to fight so hard. I'd like exactly. to see one about like people of color. Like, see, see, yeah, like, definitely. I think that would be, that would be like, really that. Really like someone like Dwayne McDuffie. Oh, or, yeah. Um, I'd love to see a whole documentary like the, about the Hernandez brothers. Yeah. Like, people like that. And, yeah. Well, I think talking about the Hernandez brothers leads us nicely into the rise of the underground comics. Yes. Mm-hmm. In 1972. Yes. And the underground comics, the whole idea was, we don't need to be like the mainstream. We can talk yeah. about cool things, so, interesting things. Like, but instead of doing that, they just wound up being even more offensive to women, thinking yeah. that it was making a statement and being funny. They yeah. were talking about rape and Murder. torture, yeah. murdering women. Yeah. Um, these were radicals that were and, out of yeah, San Francisco, and, by and the way. The, the idea always came across like it was meant to be this ironic statement on, like, look how we treat women, but it's not made very clear. Yeah. And you can see that they're enjoying, like, drawing and writing it a little too much. Yeah, it's like that dude who says a bad joke, but and everybody yeah. knows it's a bad joke, but then he says, you're the asshole. And then this is when we come out to find out about It Ain't Me Babe, which was like yeah. a magazine of some sort. Well, at first it was like a, 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 
um, like a collective. Yeah. collective. Yeah. And yeah. And it was it part of a, um, a larger magazine that yeah. branched off into publishing their comic. Yeah. Yeah. Where it was basically women taking control and making yeah. their own underground comics where they talked about things like female, uh, what is it, anatomy and... Well, that's where uh, Tits and Clits yeah. comics yeah. came yeah. out yeah. of. Where they talked about menstruation yeah. and lesbians they and... Just problems women have. Women <laughs> and treating women like yeah. women. Like, I mean, we don't need to talk about our balls all the time. It's, yeah, it's really it's, boring. It's true. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was stories that were very, like, true, real-life mm. situations of women. Yeah. Um, but all of them being comics, which was really neat to see. Yeah. Well, that was something that was said over and over again by almost every woman in the documentary, was if comics can do anything, why do we have such a narrow view of them? Yeah. Let's do everything. Yeah. And I think that that's wonderful. Yeah, they, that's they a really, lesson everyone should learn. Yeah, I think they really tried to elevate the genre yeah. with, with what they were, were doing. And, I, and you rarely see that. Like I think some people like adhere to this tradition of what comics yeah. are and what they, as opposed to what they can be. Because even in the mainstream, you can play with the format. You see it all the time, but you don't see it. And this leads us over to the 60s and 70s, where we have our first Comic-Con. The Golden State yeah. Comic-Con. Yeah. And in a basement. And the, the, like, the rise of fandom. Where Luke Skywalker attended. Yes. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where you, where you start seeing that there there is a lack of women fans at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was very much a boys club. And, like, I think they said well, in the yeah. that, that, that most, it could have been divided between women who were there actually were interested in comics and women who were there humoring the person they were in attendance yeah. with. And they even kind of made a point to bring up, like, there were probably a lot more fans, but when people actively push you out, you don't want to go. Yeah. yeah, I mean... I, I thought that was a, a, ni a nice yeah. thing to remind people of. Not, like, it wasn't that there weren't fans, they just felt they couldn't go because people were there yeah. telling them not to. I think we've all experienced it. Uh, yeah. There's, like, the gatekeeper I, fans who, like... I haven't. I'm white and straight, yeah. so... Yeah. But there was that one time you said at the comic shop, somebody yeah. told me, yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the gatekeeper fans who, like, kind of, like, well, you obviously don't know. They kind of assume based on what they think you are, yeah. like... And, unfortunately, uh, some girls are... I'm part of the Ladybugs. We had a fellow member that just moved out of state that was talking about how, you know... We, some girls still get the like oh how nerdy how big into the community are you yeah. oh yeah it's just yeah. like things like remember when we were buying comic books from a guy who was really nice at WonderCon and I said I've never actually read the Dark Phoenix saga even though I'm a huge Claremont fan and he was like that's awesome that you're finally going to read it I'm going to give you an extra discount yeah. and when Nelly said I'm a huge Harley Quinn fan so I'm buying this one he's the first words out of his mouth were, are you really a Harley Quinn fan and she was like, yeah, I've read this book. I just need a copy of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, don't, don't be a dick. Yeah. Like, let's, you know, let's make comics yeah. more inclusive. That's what it's exactly. like. Most nerds are people who, like, are outsiders, I guess. Yeah. That's why we go I mean, to When we things. talked to him for, like, two seconds more, it became clear that he wasn't trying to be a dick, but his knee-jerk reaction was to be one. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. But that's that's Comic Con now and how yeah. we're still suffering from that stuff. So Sorry, not yeah. to stray yeah. away from the history. <laughs> yeah. But around this time in the seventies is when Claremont decided uh to turn X Men into yeah. a thing. Oh so, he, was, what he, was, became, he was he was yeah. put on X Men. Lynn Wee yeah. handed him the keys and yeah. said, mm -hmm. Do something different. Yeah. And he turned it from the school adventure book. Yeah, the, the, and there's that little nebulous area with Dave Cockrum and Len Wayne, and then he, it became an actual like story, like an actual yeah. like soap opera Narrative. that we all know and love. Exactly, yeah. and you yeah. ha have your first starts of actual women, women yeah. depicted women characters. Yes. Like it had the largest female roster of characters yeah, and a d diverse representations yeah. of them. Like Storm can be all powerful, but Kitty Bright was scared. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. And, and it, like, was, it was an honest depiction. It wasn't like yeah. this woman is like is strong because something bad happened in her life and she'll not, you know, it wasn't it's something Storm like that. Storm is strong because Storm's the best. And, and like, I think, <laughs> like, that's pretty ahead of its time because yeah. even now, like, that's rare. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's changing, but, I mean, there's still some some comics that don't know how to write a good female character. Also, uh, X-Men, they had the first female editors and I think the one of the few, yeah. first few female creators on an yeah. X-Men tale, Anna Senti and Louise Simonson. Mm -hmm. Both of them were the first people to write X-Men besides Chris Claremont in that era. And Sensei writing a long shot miniseries and Louis Simonson taking over on X Factor. So this leads us close to the 80s now where Jeanette Kahan became... Kahn. 
Khan, yeah. Khan. 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 <laughs> uh, becomes a publisher for DC at the time, so that's yes. a big win for women. Yeah, Jeanette Khan, if you don't know who she is and you know what she's done because she was she helped publish Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen. Watchmen. She helped mm-hmm. enact Vertigo with Karen Berger. Yeah. She yep. discovered our Lord and Savior Grant Morrison. Yes. She discovered others. pretty much most of our yeah. British writers. Yeah. yeah, British and European. I'm surprised Barbara Kessel was not in this documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would think, I would yeah. think she would be in it. Like, yeah, you, I mean, not everybody's yeah. not available. Yeah, yeah. Like, I guess, I mean, I'm surprised Amanda so. Connor wasn't in it. Yeah, either. there were some She's people I was very surprised yeah. were didn't play I mean, but then parts again, of their bigger but, parts. But then again, like, but, I assume people are working, so I can't. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know what the like, goes on behind these doors. Not yet. Um, but it was a good diverse. And diverse if you don't know who Karen is, uh, before she started Vertigo, she did do Sandman. She was. Yeah, that was the, the, like the starts of Vertigo. Yeah, they were very mature. Way. They were mature in books, not in the sense like they were for adults, but they told mature stories yeah. where it was more than just like a guy punching another guy because yeah, exactly. And so moving on over to our '90s, where comic book stores have their all-time. Well, they, they get started pretty yeah, much. You ri- can't pick them up yeah. on the newspaper yeah. stands. The rise of the, the direct market. Um, um, and Image, which we yes. discussed in a previous episode, which you can check out on the link down there. Yeah. yeah. And the reasons for bringing up comic book stores is because it was such a boys club at that time that yeah. girls would feel really in- intimidated to even walk into one of them. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then when the rise of Image happened, it was 20 times worse than... Yeah. It was. The direct market rose for a number of reasons, not just collectors who started yeah. selling their own stuff. It was good and it was bad. In this case, it was bad for women. Mm-hmm. That it, it became, like we mentioned earlier, like a gatekeeper atmosphere where these people were yeah. kind if, of... If it was a little bit that way, now that was the only way because it was be also being reinforced, yeah. the idea that comics weren't for women because look how they were yeah. drawing yeah. them. There is this certain idea i guess amongst these gatekeeper type of fans who like if you don't fit this profile then you're probably yeah. not a real fan if you don't look like me yeah you can't go to the comic book store. yeah but so. <laughs> due to all of this you do have the beginning of friends of lulu the friends of lulu yes yeah, yeah. it's basically like the ladybugs of their of the 90s yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there was a comic lulu. strip way back when called little lulu, lulu. Mm-hmm. Where that's she where it came from. She was a sick. total dick to boys. Yeah. That's literally that's what I wrote away. Note yeah. is, Lulu was a dick to boys. Yeah. Um, they <laughs> because, because boys were dick to her, yeah. not just like out of malice, just so we yeah. clear that up. So the way they came about this was they pretty much at one of the Comic Cons, they set up a meeting at a room and all of these crazy amount of women yeah. showed up. And men. Yeah. Yes. And men, and, like, it was yeah. basically people who were excluded Sick from, the, from, the, yeah. from the comic book industry because either they were women or they didn't fit what the comic book industry wanted in a creator. Yeah. Um, and they all banded together to support one another, to help each other become successful. Because like I think like a good community is one of support and it's not just a selfish thing where it's like only... Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like if yeah. you help someone, then you're helping yourself because they might help you in the future. Um, and they actually ended up making this whole group made a book called uh, How to Get Girls Into Your Store for Retailers. Yeah. So pretty yeah. much telling comic book store owners how Don't to stop be a being dick. a dick. Yeah. Because <laughs> also, like, if you isolate women away or you, you keep women out of your stores, you basically chopped off half the market that you could potentially make money from. From an economic standpoint, that's really dumb. Yeah. And they kind of, uh, just not to get into it because we'll talk about this later. But they talk a little bit about the early 2000s where manga and anime start yeah. getting big. Such the internet being such a yeah. humongous one up bonus for women. Because yeah, that's web the comics, way. Yep. Web comics and stuff. Yeah. Uh, which I think the manga influence is now like really hitting yes. its peak. Mm-hmm. These women that went into those manga stores and got manga, like we now are seeing their. Yeah. Their products. Their rise up. Yeah. That's a cute, neat history yeah. lesson yeah. about. Yeah what they yeah, show us yeah. in this and, and not to get like too into it more so where we spoil the entire documentary yeah. but watch it so yeah. much good stuff oh, yeah. um, it, well, I think it's the most important documentary about comics you'll probably ever watch yeah also it's really neat um, for people that aren't familiar with faces of who's doing your favorite comic books yeah Alright, and now we're going to let you guys know about, like, the fandom. The influence of the of yeah. the industry on the fans, and then their influence on the industry itself. Mm-hmm. Well, how it played such an important role in women get, breaking into comics. At the first Comic-Con, believe it or not, there was already a giant, like, 
amount of cosplayers. That's the first glance at the masquerade. Yeah, you have cosplay the... as like an idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a, a Red Sonia look-alike kind of competition. And she's the creator of ElfQuest. I actually love ElfQuest. Why can't I remember her name? Wendy Peeney. Wendy Peeney. Wendy Peeney, notable Red Sonia cosplayer, mm -hmm. who, because of her awesome cosplay, was given an opportunity to write Red Sonia, which was yeah. her entrance into the industry. Yeah. And then she created ElfQuest. Because it turned out the industry decided, no, 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 no woman would want to read a comic book about a woman written and drawn by a woman. It's 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 weird. It's black yeah. and white. It's about elf. Yeah. Who wants yeah. to read about fantasy? And ElfQuest is still one of the most successful creator-owned comics of all yeah. time. I have it on my bookshelf. ElfQuest is the shit. It started like 78, 79. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's still going. So if you want to, there's a yeah. lot to catch up on if you're interested. And it's still her doing it, which yes. is... Fucking astounding. Yeah. I hope I can do that. I hope yeah. I can have a creator own comic that runs to long. Oh. <laughs> yeah. From going to that to now, we have the internet where everybody sends fan art to artists. Yeah. Or just posts it. Like, exactly. Yeah. Um, where that's how a lot of people are getting picked up. Believe yes. it or not, Bab Star, that's how she got yeah, started yeah. from Tumblr. Yeah. And when Stuart and Brendan Fletcher reached out to her and said, we are starting a series in DC, we love your design work, come work with us. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest first success stories of the internet is Gail Simone. Yeah. Oh, and um, Simone. Because she, women in refrigerators. Yeah. She criticized the depiction of women. Uh, women in refrigerators, for those of you who don't know, if the term fridging is when uh, a female character is, is killed. Unjustly. Yeah. And unjustly, solely for the purpose yeah. of motivating the male hero it, character. It comes from um, an issue of uh, the Kyle Rayner run of Green Lantern, where what is it like Major Mayhem, a villain? I think that's his name. Probably wrong. Major um, Force. Major Force. Thank you. Very nineties name. By yes. The way. Uh, stuffed mm -hmm. Kyle Rayner's girlfriend in his refrigerator and killed her. Yeah. For and, no uh, reason. Yeah. For no Except reason. Except that they wanted to advance the plot forward. You don't even have to kill the character. Yeah, yeah. You just have to it's depower just, just, them and take them away in a way that makes them yeah. victims instead of characters. Yeah. Gwen Stacy yeah. is, a, is a good example. I, I love that story, but yeah. they fridge her. They spend all this time making her this well-rounded character after all these years, yeah. and then they kill her off just because it gives Spider-Man a vendetta. That's the only reason they would do it. Yeah. And Gail Simone, so, uh, being an educated you know, woman and ma documented all these things, she reached out to the industry saying like, hey, what's wrong with you? So the industry like, well, if you don't like it, why don't you write something? And she did. Yeah. And that was her start into yeah, the comics. She's one of the most successful writers of all time. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go read her back. Go around versus it's great. Great. They're great. Yeah, so the internet, also web comics. One of the creators mentioned is Kate Beaton in terms of web comics. So if you've probably mm -hmm. seen Heart the Vagrant, which is this, this historical comedy Comic. She's a notable example of the web comic. Noelle Stevenson, who wrote Nimona, she also was discovered online because of a web web comic. So it's yeah. cool, like that women reach out across the internet each other to support. Like, hey, I like this comic, and they'll they'll promote it. Yeah, I mean, you're a big part of web comics community. You read a lot of them and post a lot of them and support them. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna mention our ladybugs yeah. are huge, like web. Yeah comic readers and creators. Yeah. How do you feel about like the like the webcomic community compared to the comic community? Most of them tend to be one pagers, two pagers, because you don't want to flood it's people. It's more like a strip format, exactly. as opposed to an actual um, comic book. And it's really neat to see how they lay out a whole story. Um, I'm sure if you've been on Facebook, you've seen those um, girls talking about like, ah, look at my hair in the morning, look at how shitty my life is, because oh, I'm right. such a girl. Yeah. Those are technically yeah. web comics. Yeah. They're little tiny yeah. comics made for your enjoyment on the internet. Yeah. It's neat. What is it hyperbole and a half? I think yeah. that's a notable web comic. Uh, Girl with the skeleton hand. That's amazing. If you haven't seen it's it, really I think there's good. two different ones mm -hmm. that they've done. It's really cute. I, have, I don't know what that is, so I'm it, gonna look it up now. I, I think web comics are like the next phase of like underground oh, comics, yeah. and that they're moving away from yeah. what um, the mainstream tells you you have to write and yeah. draw. I think a lot of people. I know. Well, I know a lot of people at. Yeah, uh, Boom Studios were discovered for their web comics. The, that's the, the fandom. These people were comics fans, and then they are now influencing the industry both directly and indirectly with what they are creating for themselves. And a lot of them are women. Some of them are men too. But I think for the purposes of this video, we're focusing on female creators. All of these women that did all of this and fought so much for women to have a right, it's awesome to see how they're just like, fuck you. I can be a badass too, and maybe I can make it even better than what you do. If a publisher doesn't want to like publish them, they can just make it themselves, and I think that's really cool for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and now, 
like creators now and like where yeah. the industry is headed. We have a lot of notable creators, I would say. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's it's so awesome to know there's a large amount of people to the point where we're like, holy fuck, there's not enough that I can even like name off. Yeah, that makes yeah. me happy. <clears throat> there's so many I can't name all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. notable creators I would say like Kelly Sue, the first G Willow Wilson on yeah. this Marvel. Becky uh, Cloonan was mentioned. They didn't talk too in depth about all of the current creator people, but they did focus on some that did yeah. some giant milestones. Yeah. Be- Becky Cloonan was the first woman to draw the Bane Batman title. Yeah, which is like insane because she yeah. did it in like 2013. Yeah, but that was the it was first 2012. Was it 2012? Yeah, it was 2012. Mm-hmm. I remember looking it up for our. Gotham Academy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Which she does certain title roles yes. like Gotham yeah. Academy. Uh, Danger Days, The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. Yes. Kelly Sue, which is yeah. an absolute 100% fucking badass. She, she's like a superstar right now. Yeah. Like she's crossing over outside of um, the comic book medium into like just like mainstream pop culture as a figure, which yeah. is awesome to see. A quick shout out <coughs> to our podcast. We just did a, a, one of her books called Pretty Deadly. Yes. If you haven't checked that it. out, it's yeah. uh, episode 14, the only one there. Yeah. Yeah. It's up on iTunes and Podomatic. Yes, with Emma Rios, by the way. Maybe something iconic you've seen her work in is uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Yes, she's the reason Captain Marvel is, like, huge. Yeah, yeah, movie. Is. Um, yeah. And she's definitely also one of the people that draws a lot on, like, comic books should be different. We don't have to do the same things over and over. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. G. Willow Wilson. Yeah. Yep. yeah. She, she's another one who's really transcending the genre. Yeah. Which is something you don't see very many creators do, so to see that it's two women... Yeah. We're probably at the forefront of doing that right now. I should, I kind should, of amazing. I should mention that it was Sana Amanat, who is the editor for Miss Marvel, who is yes. also, uh, I should mention that G. Willow Wilson is Muslim. Um, Kamala Khan, her Miss Marvel, is the first female-led character who is Muslim at Marvel. Yes. One of the top-selling books last year. Um, it's ridiculously mm-hmm. amazing. And I believe Sana <laughs> Amanat, the editor for that book, is also a female editor. Yes. Uh, and yeah. she's also Muslim. Well, they're, they're both... Um, counted as co-creators because the character yeah. was her idea and G. Willow Wilson just really shaped it Yeah, as a writer. And I also think G. Willow Wilson used to work for DC. Karen uh, Baker helped her. Yeah. Was her big Air. Yeah. And we did mention uh, Gail Simone uh, a little bit ago but she is yeah. somebody they did talk a lot. She yeah. continues to be like at the forefront of pushing diversity in comics forward by yes. doing things like introducing the first trans character in the DC universe. You know, yes. things like that. She did do Batgirl. She was also fundamental in shaping the character of Oracle in Birds of Prey. Mm-hmm. I think um, the mo- the modern mm-hmm. image of comics, she she was a big part of one of those things. Yeah. You have other women like Amanda Connor, Noel Stevenson, mm-hmm. Marguerite Bennett, oh Kate Leth. Just crazy yeah. amount. It's good shit. Where t- where the future of the industry is headed, I think it's a good place. Um, yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts like or criticisms about this movie? I think it should be longer. Um, yeah, I wish it was a TV miniseries, yeah. the way that you pointed to, um, like, the different rock docs you can find on, like, yeah. VH1 as an example. Yeah, because, I mean, there, you, I've seen so many, like, rock documentaries where it's, like, ten yeah. episodes long, and each covers, like, a different movie. Yeah. I think, like, it would be cool just to cover, like, like you said, the underground comics movement, yeah. or just, yeah. like, creators in general, like, Jackie Orms, who was the first uh, yeah, I would like color. a ten-episode documentary about Jackie Orms. She yeah. sounds amazing. It's a, she looked, like, like, her comics looked amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think that would be an interesting, like, everything that was kind of touched upon, I think that's mm-hmm. why, like, they, since, because it's only, like, an hour and a half, I think. Yeah, it's supposed to be kind of, digestible. Yeah, everything was touched upon, but I think, and they did it in a, in a way that was, like, informative, but I think there there's, like, so much they could do yeah. with what they touched upon, because I think there are things that they teased, and they kind of, like, skipped over to the next thing, which isn't bad. You know, yeah, not, no, they but, still do mm-hmm. a, a great job with yeah. it. What do you think yeah. about it? It was amazing. Yeah. It was. There's no other word other than badass ladies, because yeah. that's what everybody in there is. Yeah. Um, just all of the crazy amount of things that they did for us now, trying to get into the yeah. comic book industry. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, it's it's great. Um. It would be awesome if it would have been a little longer, but like the boys said, if they did just a separate episode, just an hour and something of each woman and just yeah, to know yeah, get indeed. to know them oh and know God. their struggles and know yeah. what they had to deal with yeah it would be amazing or just uh, like movements like the underground comics movement i think that would have been an interesting yeah. thing uh i'm sure there probably are documentaries but i don't know yeah. how detailed they yeah. are or what the leaning is but 
Yeah, overall, it was, it was it's a really good documentary. Yeah. Though. It's probably one of the best ones it, I've seen regarding comics. You, you can download you it on the it. internet, or you can find it... Um, it's, it's on you can order it on yeah. DVD. It's from the Sequart organization, who yeah. also did the Image Revolution. It was published in 2014. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, you can find the trailer yeah. on YouTube if you're not yeah. sure. It's a good documentary. Like It's yeah. really like really in-depth. Despite yeah. despite saying like it only touches upon things, it's really in depth yes. for what it for what it does. And as a girl, it makes me feel like more of a badass. Like if these girls <laughs> manage to do all of that, what makes me think I can't? Yeah, I'm not even a girl, and I feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel empowered. Yeah. Like like that's the best thing about yeah. this documentary is, um, which artist was it that said, uh, "I don't make my comics for anyone. Like, I make my comics for me." Like, uh, she was an older. She yeah. was an old. She's been working since like the sixties. Yeah. She was. I, I don't. I wish I knew her name. We'll probably put it up. Yeah. But she was. That I was think, her one part of the documentary was just her saying that, and it sums up exactly what I feel like it was. Yeah. About. I think everyone should make comics for themselves because yeah. there's so much you can do with comics that you can't do in movies or books yeah. or you know all that. And I, I always try to get people into comics, and I think like people maybe like or maybe women or just but and in general like if you're not into comics if you watch this you will be into comics yeah, because yeah. it'll open your eyes to yeah. a lot of different things and what yeah. the form can do these ladies did do a lot to change um how do i say it it's not all superhero based yeah. now yeah. it's a lot wider and a lot of these crazy stories are coming out yeah. to the point where like my sister is even getting interested into things and she's not a comic book person. <laughs> I think the connotation of comics, when people mention it, people think automatically of superheroes. Yeah. And um, I think that there's so much more that you can't, I think we talk about this all the time, that there's so much out there that, yeah. that you just don't know about it, that there's a genre or a title for everyone within the comics medium. And I think it's cool that there are people who are trying to push for stuff other than superheroes. I love superheroes. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Yeah. They're superheroes never, are my favorite. Superheroes are never going to go away. But yeah. there's so much you can do with the medium of comics with other genres and, yeah. and stories that, you know, we, yeah. we probably haven't even, like, tapped yet. Or just even when they, they humanize some of our superheroes, yeah. hear their stories more in, like, depth. And yeah. see them as people. Yeah, it's where they neat. humanize them and they they become characters and yeah. not just like the guy with the cape who punches the bad yeah. guy. Um, but I think this is a good wrap up of our yeah. yes our little uh, she makes comics review. Check it out. Yes. Look Get at it, it wherever you can. Yeah, tell yeah. us what you think about it. Yes. And just a quick shout out. If I don't do it enough, go check out the Ladybugs on Facebook. Yeah. They are the Los Angeles Women's Creator yeah. League. And they are amazing. They are a group of girls trying to get yeah. their own web comics. They're not just web comics. They want to be like printed. creators. Yes. They're yeah. writers. They're artists. Um, they're colorists. They, they're, honestly, exactly. Like, I've seen, I like. I, I meet them, and they like. They know everything. They're and the I, most well-rounded group of artistic people you will find in the industry. Yeah, I think Matt and I. We we talk about like Matt and I. It takes Matt and I to do what one of the ladybugs can do yeah. by themselves. It takes us like two months. It takes. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, I can write, but I don't know how to draw. Matt can draw. And you said you don't know. I how don't to know write. how to write. Yeah. And like. These ladybugs are just like, I can do both of these things. You And wings. color it, and print it, <laughs> yeah. and sell it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're, they're yeah. just amazing, and I'm very proud yes. to say I'm they, part of them. They are what this documentary is about. Yeah. yeah. Like, they are the people. They are yeah. the future. They are the future. Um, and you could check us, up, uh, check us out on Facebook. We're on Twitter, I believe, and on Tumblr. Instagram. But I'll, on Instagram. Instagram, yes. Yeah. But also, um, we will be at certain conventions, so look for our booth. Um, yes. We're there. We, you can Long talk Beach? with us. Long Beach? Um, I'm not sure about Long Beach, but I know WonderCon's up okay. for sure, okay. which is huge for us. Yeah. Um, you we'll know, be there, I think. Just walking around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you, you um, could see us in, um, if yeah. you are a creator in the California, the LA, Bay, LA, yeah, Bay area. We're at the Manhattan yeah. Beach Comic Con. Yeah. Comic I'm not comic book, comic con, comic book. Or you can just reach out to us, yeah. and we can like give you the yeah. information. Exactly. Reach out to them. Like it's cool. Like we're all but, friends. Like I think that's like we're part of like the community. I think. Yes. Um, we'll put them. We'll put all of the info for them down below, just so you guys can. Yeah. yeah check um, them out. Yeah, they're good friends. They're good people. Yeah. I mean, they help Matt and I like become yes. better like creators. I think. Like I, I'm yeah. a, 
I've I've learned how to draw better more than I in like the last few months just talking to them. I have too. Yeah, <laughs> I've learned how to write better. Like I think like it's really cool that like I'm like I support them and stuff. Like it's kind of like me. I'm, this is just me personally, but it's kind of hard to find that uh, that kind of camaraderie. So uh, I'm grateful for them. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but to wrap it up, girls are awesome. Keep yes. kicking ass. Yes. And this has been another wonderful episode of the Graphic Ramblers. Yes. Yeah. Second video, 2K16. What? 2K16. So, uh, signing off. Have a good one. Pew, pew.